Hello and welcome back to Vizura Recaps. The film begins with our main character, Kale, fishing with his father, Daniel. On the drive home, while Daniel is bragging to Kale's mother about his great fishing, a random SUV cuts them off, but swiftly swerves out of the way and dodges a broken down automobile, leaving Kale with insufficient time to respond. They bump into it and roll over. The two swiftly check on each other to assure everything is fine. When a random truck appears without seeing them and collides with Daniel's son, Kale, who is badly injured, jumps out of the car and runs to aid his father, but he does not survive. So sad. This leads to a title card dated one year later. Kale is asleep in Spanish class until his teacher wakes him up and asks him to deliver his final speech in Spanish. Kale struggles and can't really find the right words to put together. His teacher becomes irritated and goes overboard, saying how his father will be displeased. Kale has had enough and punches him in the face. He must, of course, face the consequences, but the judge is understanding of his circumstances and sentences, him to three months of house detention rather than jail. The next day, Detective Parker comes at his house and straps him in with his new ankle bracelet. She informs him that if he steps outside his boundaries for more than ten seconds, authorities will be notified immediately. After the information dump, they leave. When Kale discovers that Officer Gutierrez is his teacher's cousin, he will most likely have it out for him. However, Kale is unconcerned about the punishment because he can spend the entire day playing online games and he can purchase music from iTunes. His mother walks in and you can see there's been some animosity between them lately. She informs him that she has canceled all of his online memberships and even disconnected his TV power plug so that he can get up and be more active around the house. As Mother departs for work, we see a montage of Kale being a classic slobby teenager half-assing all of his household tasks. After all that hard effort, he takes a nap, but is soon awakened by the sounds of his new neighbors moving in next door. One of them happens to attract his attention swiftly. His doorbell immediately rang. Running to open it, he discovers a bag flaming unaware, contains a dog poop, and the children who planned it giggling. He starts following them after one of them reminds him that he's under home arrest. He rushes back home, just making it in time, or so he thought. Definitely not a good first impression at her parents' house. Fortunately for Kale, he receives one freebie. Not willing to take any chances, he sets some strings as boundaries to guarantee he doesn't go too far. While doing so, he notices the new girl arrive home and rushes up to his father's old office, where he creepily watches her through the window. He hears a tap on the door again and rushes to answer it to meet his good friend, Ronnie. Kale gives Ronnie a good look around the area. The first is Mr. Turner, a calm, elderly guy who appears to stay to himself. Then, there are the kids that enjoy pranking Kale. And finally, there's the new neighbor lady, who is currently in the pool, rousing these fools. Later in the day, Kale is just swinging on the porch with nothing else to do until the neighbor girl pulls back into her driveway. He dashes to the mailbox, pretending to struggle with the mail to catch her attention. This actually works, and she assists him and introduces herself for the first time as Ashley. Later that night, while watching the news, Kale overhears about an unsolved missing person case and learns that the suspect was driving a 1960s Ford Mustang with a dent in the left side. His phone's alarm suddenly goes off, signaling that it's time to go watch Ashley conduct her nightly stretching routine. Kale's a strange person. After her father enters and becomes enraged at her for unclear reasons, he turns his attention to his other neighbor. Mr. Turner appears suspicious because his 1960s Mustang has a dent on the left side. This concerns Kale a little. The next morning, he looks at the paper, which contains new information about the missing woman case. He decides to conduct some investigations with Ronnie. They discover that the circumstances surrounding the missing woman's abduction are very similar to other murder kidnappings in Austin just three years before. They never arrested the killer. But they did discover seven victims in the house where he was residing, with no evidence of him. They rapidly lose interest as Ashley goes swimming. It doesn't last long, though, because she finds them staring. When the doorbell rings, they hide in embarrassment. As anxious teenagers, they worry, but eventually open the door to see Ashley. She pretty much invites herself inside. Kale, clearly unconcerned, makes her way to his filthy room, which Kale and Ronnie swiftly clean up. 
When she discovers the binoculars he's been using to spy at everyone, they swiftly conceal the fact that he was watching her by informing her about their suspect neighbor, Mr. Turner, and telling her they believe he's a killer. They inform her about the Mustang, but minutes later, Mr. Turner drives out of the garage with the clean, undamaged Mustang, perplexing Kale. While Kale is acting odd and smelling her hair, Ashley mentions a longhorn skull hanging in his garage. Kale quickly draws parallels to a similar run of murders in Texas. Ashley becomes interested and chooses to accompany him on his investigation. After a few hours, Ronnie passes out from a pizza overdose, leaving Kale and Ashley alone. She paints some hearts on his ankle bracelet and begins flirting until Mr. Turner returns home with his own firecracker. The two spy on them while they have some wine and dance, but after a few minutes, they discover Mr. Turner clutching a knife and sneaking up behind the woman. They worry for a second, before realizing he was only cutting off the woman's clothing tag. The two are about to smooch when Ronnie interrupts. Do something! They prepare to smooch again, but are interrupted by a phone call from her mother requesting that she return home. Kale walks her back, ready to smooch again, but she leaves him hanging. He returns home to find the prankster kids viewing something on YouTube. They could be upset with me, but it rhymes with corn, so perhaps you know what it is. However, his attention is drawn back to Mr. Turner's residence when he spots the woman running around, attempting to escape. He mistakenly captures a photo with a flash on, which catches Mr. Turner's attention. Kale hurriedly calls Ronnie to inform him of the situation, but pauses talking as he notices the woman casually walking out of the house and back to her car. The next morning, Kale wakes up and comes downstairs for breakfast when he notices Mr. Turner in his house. He shortly discovers that his mother called him home because of his generosity in assisting her with a flat tire. They talk back and forth a while, and you can certainly feel the tension developing in the room. Kale heads upstairs where Ashley awaits him. He recounts the entire problem to her, but she calms him down by stating he's overthinking everything. She then prepares to go, telling Kale that she's giving a party tonight and needs to get ready, which makes him jealous. Later that night, he, of course, observes her at the party. When he sees a guy cuddling her, he decides to instill fear and blasts Tanisha Kelly's loving you song. Ashley becomes quite offended and Ashevet as everyone at the party laughs. She crawls through a window and grabs his iPod, threatening to leave the house if he does not stop. They're both upset with each other, but Kayla eventually spills his heart out to her. She can't decide whether he's the creepiest or the loveliest guy ever. They then share a big old kiss. As they prepare to do some nasty work, Ashley watches Mr. Turner pulling some suspicious-looking bags into his garage. They decide to investigate the next morning, with Ashley spying on Mr. Turner at the hardware store and Ronnie obtaining the garage code to his house. Ashley ultimately loses sight of Mr. Turner and prepares to go, but he stops her. He starts off casually, but then he pulls her keys from the ignition and gets into the car for a serious conversation. He tells her he knows she and her buddies are spying on him. He asks her to stop since he values his privacy, but finds it unsettling, before returning the keys and leaving. She returns to Kale and Ronnie, where she relates all that transpired. All he stated was that he preferred his privacy. But think about it. Why would he want his privacy? Maybe folks prefer their privacy. Shia, I'm a little perplexed by your inquiry. Ashley insists that Mr. Turner is correct, that they have officially gone too far. She begs them to stop investigating and spying on him, then leaves and returns home for her parents' anniversary. Later that night, Kale builds a gadget that allows them to watch what his camera captures on his TV at home. Ronnie unexpectedly knocks on his door, telling him that he left his phone in Mr. Turner's car. Panicking, Kale sends him over there with the camera, and he enters through the garage. Ronnie notifies him of a foul odor and a bag with blood pouring through it. While inspecting, the garage door unexpectedly closes, prompting Ronnie to yell and flee for his life before the video becomes static. Kale, unconcerned about his ankle bracelet, heads over there with a baseball bat, but as soon as he steps through the front door, the cops arrive and handcuff him. Mr. Turner appears, leading Kale to inform the police about the issue. They find him compelling and decide to investigate Mr. Turner's home only to discover that the bloody bag contains a dead deer that Mr. Turner allegedly ran over a few nights earlier. 
The police informed Kale's mother that he would have to appear in court the next morning as a result of his activities. She is upset and angry, but she tries to get him off the hook by going to Mr. Turner's house and apologizing in the hopes that he would not press charges. Meanwhile, Kale goes to his room and is startled by Ronnie, who is pretending to be dead in his closet. Clearly annoyed by what Kale has just gone through, he brings him up to speed and then shows him what the camera captured when he was in Mr. Turner's residence. And fortunately, Kale detects something. He zooms in several times on one frame, revealing a dead body preserved beneath an air vent. At the same time, Mr. Turner knocks out his mother before sneaking over to Kale's and quietly beating Ronnie over the head with a baseball bat. We then see the long-awaited combat sequence between the two. After some fighting, Kale flees, attempting to exit the perimeter to attract police notice, but Mr. Turner stops him and knocks him out. He then ties him up and discloses his entire plot for framing Kale. They hear Ashley call for him from below when he takes too long explaining his strategy. This temporarily distracts Mr. Turner, allowing Kale to slap him in the face. He goes out to Ashley, who assists him in fending off Mr. Turner, until Kale throws him over the stair rail, causing him to fall to the bottom floor. They then enter his bedroom and lock the door. Mr. Turner pulls a Here's Johnny, prompting the two to escape through the window and jump into Ashley's pool. Kale instructs Ash to phone the police while he goes to Mr. Turner's residence to find his mother. He arrives and discovers a secret room straight out of Saw. He discovers the woman's possessions from earlier and understands that Mr. Turner was impersonating her to deceive Kale. Meanwhile, Officer Gutierrez arrives, but Mr. Turner secretly assaults him, breaking his neck. Back in the basement, Kale makes his way through a strange maze until he finds his mother bound up. He cuts the ropes, but Mr. Turner grabs her from behind. He tosses her against a wall and fights Kale. He presses him against the wall, and just before killing him, Kaylee's mother stabs him in the leg with a screwdriver. Kaylee then grabbed the head shears and jammed them into Mr. Turner's stomach. He drives Mr. Turner through a cracked floor into a pool of water and bodies. Kale and his mother depart the house, glad to be alive. Detective Parker returns the next day to remove Kale's ankle band in recognition of his good behavior. He rushes out of the house and into Ashley's yard, where he gives her a big kiss. They then go upstairs to get back at the douche kids across the street, prank calling their parents, pretending to be the cable provider, and revealing that someone is watching, you know what, in the other room. They smile, laugh, and kiss, as if they've conquered life, and the screen goes blank. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more material like this, and please press the like button to assist us. Also, if you want us to recap your favorite movie, leave a comment. Take care until the next time.